Want to learn how to draw a creepy gray alien head using Krita? That's coming up next. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Aaron Rutten, and it is my mission to help artists like you enjoy digital art and learn some new skills along the way. That's why today we're going to be drawing this creepy gray alien head. Let's go ahead and jump into Krita and get started. I'm going to start by turning on symmetry painting up here in the top on the properties bar, and I'll just use a vertical bilateral symmetry. If you click the flyout next to that, you can lock that guide so that you can't accidentally move it. This is very important. We'll want to keep this guide centered throughout this drawing process. Now on the left, I have some brush presets that I've saved here. I've sorted them into a custom tag. I'm selecting a brush called Real Pencil. This is just based off the Tilted Pencil, which is a default preset. And this will allow you to tilt your pencil so you can draw with the side of your pencil like you would with a real pencil. You can do this only if your tablet and pen support pen tilt. So let's go ahead and sketch the head. I'm using a dark gray or a black color here. And I'll just sketch in a circle like this. It's going to appear on both sides of the symmetry plane. I have the symmetry plane hidden because I find it distracting, but you could keep it visible. We'll go ahead and just flatten off the sides of the head. And then we'll draw a jawline. You could have the jawline shaped however you like. I think I'll have it be a little bit rounded like this. I want this to look humanoid, but not exactly like a human. And then I'll go ahead and round the top of the head and just make it nice and smooth. We can change all this stuff later as we're drawing. Now I want to erase. I can flip my pen over if it has an eraser and erase with the pen, or I can just select an eraser brush. I'll go ahead and just clean up those extra guidelines. And then I'll divide that head shape in half horizontally. That guide will show us where to place the eyes, which will be right underneath that guide. And then from the top of the eyes down, we'll divide that shape in half roughly. And that's where we'll center the nose on that guide. And then about halfway between the nose and the chin is where we'll place the mouth. Now I'll go ahead and start to add in some details to help fill this out and help it look a little bit more unique. I'll add some cheekbones here and some weird stuff along the chin, a little bit of gills or ridging along the nose. So I want this to look like my own unique alien and not just a copy of someone else's. I'm going to do a little bit of shading using the side of my pencil to get a broader mark and using lighter pressure to get a lighter mark or heavier pressure and building it up to get a more opaque, darker mark. I can even use my eraser here and there if I need to. Another alternative to erasing and redrawing is just to sculpt your face using the distortion brushes. For example, you can pinch or shrink to pull things in, make them smaller. You can push things around using Distort Move. I'll make a bigger brush here and I'll just push the nostrils up. So rather than erasing and redrawing, I can just do that, which saves me time. I'm going to go back to the pencil now. And I'll just draw a few more details on the nostrils here to help those stand out. Next, I'll switch to Distort Grow. And this is going to inflate the pixels or enlarge them. So I could use that to enlarge the eyes. We can see how that looks. If you like it, you can keep it. If not, you can undo make my brush even bigger. Now there is a bit of distortion that can happen to the edges of some of the pixels, so you have to watch out for this brush. If you use a really large brush, it can also get really slow and laggy. So just be careful when you're using it and only really use it if you need to. I'm kind of composing as I go along here. So I'm sculpting the face and then just deciding if what I'm doing is looking better or looking worse. I think this is really distorting it and helping it look more like an alien and less like a human. So I think I like the direction that this is going. I do notice that it did distort some areas, which I'll have to fix a little bit later with the pencil, but that's OK. I'm going to go ahead and just darken those edges now, since we did thin them out a bit by pushing them. And I can even add a little bit of shading along the edges, too, just using the side of my pencil with lighter pressure so that it doesn't build up too dark. This will create a little bit of shadow underneath the edges and help it start to look kind of rounded and three dimensional rather than flat. And then here you can see on the inner edges of the eyes, there's some distortion where it kind of fractured the pixels. I'll have to go ahead and just clean that up using white and black. Now I'm going to turn off symmetry. I want this stuff to be asymmetrical, so I'm going to sketch in some areas of highlights on the eyes. And then surrounding those reflections, I'll just fill it in with black. Now I'm going to select white. You could use white or you could use your eraser. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and just use white. That'll give me a bit more texture. The eraser would be a little bit softer, depending on the eraser that you use. And I'll just bring back in some highlights on the top of the eyes there, maybe in some other areas along the edges of the eyes. I'll add a few little reflections and highlights here and there. 
Next, I want to go ahead and fill in the skin color with some gray. I'll create a new layer and move that to the middle. And it would be good to go ahead and name those layers. The bottom one will be background, the top one will be lines, and the middle one will be called fill. On that middle layer, I'll select black, and the brush that I'm going to use is called Quick Shade. I'll hold shift and drag to make a larger brush, and I'll just try to use lighter pressure so that I don't build it up too dark. And I'll just fill this in with gray, mining the different contours of the face and trying to enhance those and go with them rather than go against them. But overall, just trying to fill this in just to make it a lighter kind of medium gray. I'm going to switch back to my pencil. There's a few areas I want to clean up here on the eyes. I want to make sure that I'm on the lines layer as well because that's where most of that eye is. I can go back to that fill layer now. I'll go back to quick shade and I'll continue using white with a larger brush just to bring in some little highlight areas here wherever the light source is going to be, which is going to be on the top, right in the center. I'll go back to the pencil and I'll add in some smaller little details like on the nose here and under the nostrils. This will really help all of these edges stand out. I'm going to select the lines, hit Control E to merge those with the fill layer. And I'll continue going in and shading here. I don't really need those layers to be separate. I just did that just to make sure that I was really happy with how I filled it in. If you keep your layers separate, then you can experiment more easily and then you don't have to worry about messing something up. All I'm doing here is continuing on with the pencil, adding lighter and darker areas just to build up this form and help it look more three dimensional. I can also create a sense of texture, as such as skin texture, or little lumps and bumps and wrinkles. I'm really varying my pen pressure here so that I can get very thin light lines and then very thick heavy lines when I tilt my pen and press harder. That gives me a lot of variety without having to change my brush size. Once I'm finished with that, I'm gonna to switch to the eraser and I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up some of the edges using a soft eraser. There's a few little imperfections and little areas where I overpainted, so I'll just clean those up. Now when I started this, I wasn't sure if I was going to have a background color or not. I think I will have a background color. I'm going to put that in using quick shade, using black with a bigger brush. The problem now is that I'm going to have to make sure that I don't overpaint onto my head. And if I do, then I'd have to erase that or do an undo. But I don't want to paint over the face. I just want to go kind of fill around the outside here. I could have started with a black canvas. That probably would have been easier, but I didn't know that I was going to have a black background. So now I'm just kind of continuing to improvise. I'm going to use a smaller brush to go along the edges and just fill that in. Just very carefully try to avoid painting onto the face. It might make things easier just to go ahead and merge that fill layer with the background. Now once I've got most of that filled in, I'll select the pencil again and I can go in here and just clean up that edge very carefully. And you can go along the edge with white again just to sharpen it up. We'll create a new layer above that. We can add some texture. Let's choose texture big. And we can select black and we can just simply tap or dab to add some texture. You can reduce the opacity of that just to find a blend that you like. I just want to add a little bit of texture to the skin. I don't want to darken it too much. And we could tap in some lighter texture as well using that same brush. I'm going to switch to texture large splat. We can add in some of that. That creates a nice skin texture. You might want to use a larger brush though. Try to avoid the eyes and the nostrils. If you do overpaint or paint onto the background, then you can always go in and erase or clean it up with the pencil again later. We'll go ahead and play with the opacity a bit more on that layer until I get a nice blend. I'll go ahead and just merge that layer so that we just have one layer to work with here. I'll return to the pencil and I'll continue cleaning up the details. At this point, I've decided that I'm not going to add a body or a neck or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just transform this head so that it fits on the entire canvas. I'm going to add a new layer. It might be cool to add some stars in the background and reflect it in the eyes. I'll use white and I'll use a brush that's called Texture Starfield. Just pepper in some little stars here in the background and try to avoid the face. We can, however, put a few in the eyes because those will be reflected. I'll go ahead and just select the pencil and I'll put in some bigger stars. I'll try to keep my pen upright so that I don't make them too oblong, but it's okay if they're a little bit off because that could be light emanating from them or something. If you really wanted to, you could use a brush that's more round to put these in, but they're in the background, so I don't really care. I'll have a few reflected in the eyes here that are brighter and I'll try to repeat that pattern of the stars so that it looks like it's the same reflection. 
I'll also add a bit more brightness to the top of the head because that's where the light source is closest. Next, I'm going to distort using Grow and Shrink to reshape the head a little bit more. And I know I'm jumping around a bit here, but I'll go back to cleaning up some of the details, just adding little fine areas of light and dark. It's kind of hard to describe what I'm doing at this point because it really is just kind of adding to it until you're more happy with how it looks. I'm going to add some more distortions to the face now. Adding a bit of asymmetry to the eyes and the mouth just really helps give it kind of a facial expression. You may notice that I made an accidental mark over there on the right side of the face. I'll have to fix that later. But I'll just continue on adding more little details and just cleaning things up and fixing any mistakes I see. I'll add a scar above the eyebrow and add some bumps and lumps to the face just to give it more character. Now this next step is sort of optional. I'm going to experiment with blending a little bit and I'm just going to use a soft blender. This is just one of the standard blenders that I tweaked a little bit. And it may take away from that pencil look, it may enhance it, it depends really on how you use it. I feel like it takes away a little bit, so eventually I'm probably going to have to go back in here and maybe add a bit more texture in. But it is kind of softening some of the edges that are a bit too sharp and smoothing some things together that I wasn't too happy with when I shaded. So it kind of helps the piece, but it can also kind of hurt it, so you have to be careful with the blender so you don't take away all your detail. And at this point, I'm just trying to add to it until I'm satisfied or I get bored of working on it, whichever comes first. So I'm getting really near the end here, just looking for the last few things I can add to this to help it look a little bit better. I don't really want to put too much time into this particular piece, so I think I'm done with it. I can go ahead and go to Save As and save a copy as a Krita file, and then if I want to export it, I can export it as a PNG or whatever other file format I want to. And with that, we have a finished drawing of a gray alien head done in Krita. If you're interested in more digital art tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and enable notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.